Hey guys, I'm Claire Pelletro from ClairePels.com, your spot for super simple tips on how to actually make sense and make money off of your Facebook ads without going crazy. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the five different types of Facebook ads that you can use in a campaign that will drive traffic to your blog or signups to your list. I'm not addressing the ads that you need for a page likes campaign. That's a whole different animal, uh, which we can definitely get into another time, but there's enough to deal with here in, in just this kind of campaign that I wanna make sure um, that I really clarify what kind of ads you can use, what you need for each of them, and what they're really good for. So let's jump right on in. Okay, so we're gonna start with the most common ad that you're probably seeing right now in your newsfeed, and that is the link ad. A link ad looks like a regular Facebook post that you have posted to your own wall, uh, to your Facebook pages timeline, I mean, and then you just put it out into the world so that it's reaching people who aren't necessarily your fans. Um, you do this by putting together ad copy, an image, a call to action, and a link. Now, as you can see on this ad, you actually don't see the link. Um, you can include a link in your copy, that's totally fine. The only reason I did not in this instance is that I was concerned about having too many lines and the link would end up beneath a little see more button, and I, I just wanted to make it as simple as possible for people to read the ad copy. Um, but if anyone clicks anywhere in this image or this headline here or the call to action button, then they're going to be taken over to my landing page. Um, the different pieces of this ad are, as you can see, this copy here, which if you're using the power editor, you can actually, um, you can add a whole lot of copy. You can be very des descriptive. You can tell people exactly what they're going to get when they sign up for your list or for your free opt-in content, um, which you can't necessarily do if you're creating this ad in the regular ad interface. Then you've got an image which uh, has specific dimensions. Um, as you can see, it's a landscape portrait, sorry. It's a landscape style image. I've added some text to it to make this kind of look like a button. And then, you know, that is supposed to make people more likely to click there. Uh, there's also a headline, which doesn't have to just fit in this space. If your headline is longer, it will flow down into the next line, pushing everything down a little. And then here is more information, which I believe in this case, Facebook just grabbed from my from my landing page, but you can create, you can write whatever you want here in the description. And then this is called a call to action button. You've got sign up, learn more, download, whatever you like. I usually like to use sign up or learn more. So that's the link ad. There are a lot of pieces to this. Oh, sorry. Also, this is um, your display URL which you can write whatever you want here. When people click on your ad, it's gonna take them to the link that you provide in another little field that's not your uh, display URL. So if you actually have a long, um, ugly URL or you know maybe your, your URL is actually a lead pages URL and you want to really just kind of focus on your brand, you might wanna put yourdomain.com slash free or, or webinar or whatever your free content is. So anyway, those are the different pieces and you would use this, um, you would use this kind of ad to drive traffic to a blog post, to drive traffic to a landing page, which is what I do in 98% of my ads. Um, again, this is not, this is not going to be your ad if you're getting page likes, but this like page button, which really comes up in all the ads that you're going to see in this video, this is like this added bonus where some people just prefer to like your page instead of, uh, or in addition to clicking on your ad. So you'll see that when you run ads like these, you're going to get more likes to your page, even though that's not your actual intention. Okay, the next ad is the photo ad. So this is kind of similar, except instead of uploading a link and something that has, you know, that headline and that description and that call to action button, I've just uploaded my own photo and then I have my description here with a link 
in the description. If you're gonna use a photo ad, you need to make sure that you include your link in the, in the description. Now, what can happen with this kind of ad? People can click on your image and not on your link, thinking that maybe the image is going to take them to your landing page or to some kind of page, but that actually just makes your photo bigger. You know, I mean, this is what happens when you look at any of your friends' photos, is that you click on it, it gets bigger, and the description ends up on the right. Now, a lot of times, people will still end up clicking on your, um, on the URL in your description, but it, when you open up an image, more ads show up. That's what Facebook does. They put ads below it. They just give you more options of things to do. And a lot of times people are going to just close that image and not bother on clicking on your ads. So that's something that you really need to keep in mind. That said, you have more, um, you have more options when it comes to what image size. Uh, if you want to put something up that's not necessarily landscape or um, it's a longer image than the one in the link ad, that's totally fine. And I've had success with both kinds of ads. For a long time, this was the only kind of ad that you could put an image with. Uh, and I still got really good conversions and a good cost per conversion. So this is something I recommend people try out because it really depends on your audience and, and what they what they're more likely to click on. Some people just don't want to click on more links because all of Facebook right now is links. So let's take a look though at the two of these together so that you can compare um, you know, these two ads to see like what is the real difference. And the main difference is the headline and call to action in the link ad uh, compared to just a very simple kind of cleaner look with the photo image. But the what happens when you click on this image versus if you click on this image, um, different things happen. When you click on this image here in the link ad, uh, you get taken to my landing page. When you click on the image here, the image gets bigger. Do you need, is there anything about this image that really needs clarification? Why would anyone need to see it bigger? It's pretty straightforward. The idea here is to get people to click on the link. So for the, from the interest of my campaigns, I'm going to be more likely to run this ad. Then you have the video ad, which uh, now you can see that a lot of video ads on or videos in general on Facebook are auto playing. And so that's just when somebody scrolls through their newsfeed and there's an ad, uh, sorry, there's a video, it will just start playing automatically. And that can be really cool and something that I recommend that you try out if video is already a big part of your marketing strategy. So what you can't see here in this screenshot is that when someone plays your video ad and then they get to the end, there is a call to action that you can set up inside the, the power editor so that when the video finishes, if people get to the end, then they can click on learn more or uh, buy now, whatever your, your typical call to action buttons uh, with a link to your site. So you're gonna wanna make sure that, you know, you have somewhere to send these people after they've watched your ad. And also it's always a good idea on your video ad to include like uh, at the bottom, you know, add this after in After Effects, add a link to your site. So that's sort of always hanging out in the, the bottom right hand corner or something like that. Just to really reiterate that people should be heading over to your website or to a certain uh, page on your website in order to take some action. So then you have a regular old status ad, and this would be like if you just posted something on your own timeline on your page uh, with a link, there's no, um, there's no link preview, it's just short and sweet. Here's the thing, this is pretty uncommon, like you don't really see ads like this in your newsfeed, something that doesn't have an image or a video or just more information because this doesn't work so well. Um, for people who have never, people who aren't related to your business somehow, they are not on your list or they don't already like your page. So this is the kind of ad that you would create if you want to show your fans some specific 
update like like this one you know you want to get people on your list before a big announcement so you would create this ad inside the power editor and then use the targeting options to just show this to your fans this is the alternative to boosting a post um, you might be asking like claire what what the heck why don't i just write this on my page and then boost the post well i have so many opinions about the boost post button but basically that button doesn't give you very many options in terms of targeting so you may you're likely to uh, waste your money when you boost a post don't do it use the power editor i promise you you will get better results rant over again another rant okay then you have the offer ad which i'm going to be honest i love using this for brick and mortar businesses because when you click on that get offer button you get like a coupon emailed to you and you know someone can print out that coupon take it to your business get a free latte or get a discount on something and you know exactly where they came from that is really one of the best ways to use facebook ads for a brick and mortar business where you can't exactly track um, online conversions like like a purchase with paypal or something like that Here's the deal with the offer ad, you don't get a lot of room to write copy. Um, this limited time 30% off, that was like pretty much all I could fit when creating this ad. The same thing, the 30% off training session, they just don't give you a lot of characters for the title. So um, play with that, set aside some time to really work on your sh super short and effective copy because you're gonna need it in order for people to actually take action. So those are the five types of ads. Uh, I do want to show you though about, you know, what these ads look like on, on different formats. You know, this is what it's going to look like in somebody's newsfeed, but what about in the sidebar? So sidebar ads, now that they've got their new format, the images are, you know, bigger, they're supposed to be more effective. I still don't use sidebar ads because I'm really happy with my newsfeed ad results. I'm just, I haven't, you know, ventured into this yet. But if you do want to use the sidebar, which I highly recommend, you give that a try, especially if you aren't too happy with, you know, some of the things you've been doing yet, you need to be aware of the fact that your ads look very different on the sidebar. So you should probably be creating different ads if you're going to run them on the sidebar. Give them a totally different ad set. That way you don't have to worry about them competing with, your newsfeed ads, which tend to do better, and then Facebook optimizes, and they never get seen, in other words. In short, use a different ad set for your sidebar ads. But just be really aware of how many characters you can fit with a sidebar ad. Here, this is the link ad that I showed you at the beginning, and you can see that the copy that I wrote just stops because there isn't enough room for all that copy. So you're gonna to need to write much shorter copy. Here you can see that the image though is the same because of the new image sizes for the sidebar. So at least that's pretty awesome. This is an offer ad and here you've got the call to action button. This might actually be the reason why your ad copy is so much shorter for an offer because that allows them to still show all of the characters of your copy in the sidebar. The other question is what about mobile? How do your ads look on mobile devices? So in most cases they look pretty similar. Here, this is again my first ad that we talked about, the one with a lot of copy and then a call to action. What is missing is the description here that you saw in the other ad um, that is just another opportunity for you to be more descriptive and, and catchy and get people to click. Um, that's just gone from this ad. So these are things that you can actually see in the power editor. You can see whether or not your ads are going to look good, um, how they will look in the sidebar and on mobile devices. So let's take a quick look at how we actually upload these different ads inside the power editor and you'll see what I mean really soon. So here we are inside the power editor. Um, I'm inside my account. I've just kind of got some example ads, the same ones that you saw just a second ago. So that link ad that I talked about, you will recognize it here. This is copy, image, headline, description, call to action. 
So if I'm thinking about running this ad on mobile, which I like to do a lot, I want to make sure I can see how it looks. So I choose mobile newsfeed here at the top. And the reason that this shows up is because under placement, I've got all these three options selected. If I unselect them, then they're not going to show me the preview. Um, so great. I can take a look. I can see all my ad copy is visible, the call to action. Perfect. So what does this look like in the right column? Well, like I said, I, you don't get much room for your copy. So this is why what I'm going to do for this ad, I'm going to actually take off the right column on desktop as an option. And then if I do want to try out right column ads, then I will set up a completely different ad set and only select this and create my ad based on, on um, the size of the the right, the, bleh, the size of the right column ads. So then how do we actually set up these different ads that I talked about? So we're going to go into here. I'm going to select my Facebook page and I'm going to hit the create new unpublished page post button, which is really um, the best thing about the power editor, because that means you can create ads that look just like regular page posts without publishing them all the time to your Facebook page. So your fans aren't inundated with the same link, the same call to action, the same image. So this is how you would create a link ad. You've got that URL that I talked about. This can be any URL, lead pages, affiliate, bit.ly, you know, a regular URL from your blog whatever you want. This is not going to show up anywhere on your ad, but it is going to tell Facebook where to send people to. Then you've got your post text. This can be long, um, but I, I, I've counted it. It's about seven lines before Facebook shows that little see more um, and they kind of hide some of your copy. So it doesn't, your ads don't have to be ridiculously short and sweet, but you're, you don't want to publish a whole blog post here. These are your different call to action buttons. I would always use one. These, these have been tested out by tons and tons of people and they just, um, they've gotten really good results. So I like, I personally like to use learn more. This is your headline, the one that shows underneath your image. Here's that display link I was talking about. So if I want to put this link, for example, which doesn't exist on my website, but um, if, I'm talking about news in my ad, then, you know, having a URL that reflects the same content as the ad usually helps in getting clicks. So like I said, no one is sent to that URL. It's just the URL that is displayed on your ad. And here is the description which shows up underneath your headline uh, and right above the call to action button. Then you would go here, upload your image, make sure your image is optimized for the right size, especially in a link ad, because otherwise Facebook will just crop it themselves. And then you will hit create post. So then the next option that we saw was the photo. And this is really simple. If you are just trying to get started with Facebook ads and you want to get ads up quick, I recommend this because all you need to do is upload the image. It doesn't really matter what the image size is. And although it should be sufficiently big so that um, it shows up well on, on your Facebook, on somebody's timeline. And then your post text, include a call to action here and make sure you include the link. Here's a video. Uh, when to make a video post, you hit select video. If you have not uploaded any videos to your page yet, which I hadn't until today, um, you're going to have to upload video. And guess what? It takes a long time. Even the three second, literally three second video that I uploaded myself. So keep that, bear that in mind and leave time. I don't know, go like do some laundry or something while you're waiting for this to upload. That's what I did. Then you can put whatever text you want here, maybe a description of what people are going to see or the benefits of watching this video, plus a call to action like click below to watch this video. Don't ever be afraid of using copy like that because it really works. It may seem obvious, but people need to be told exactly what to do. 
Then the call to action, this is what I mentioned before, that this is what shows up after somebody has watched your video. So I usually like, again, to use learn more. And then here is the destination URL, wherever you want people to be sent once they click on the learn more button at the end of your video and then actually what link they're gonna be shown. So again, you can put any link here that you like. Um, it's not actually going to direct them to that page. Here's the status, this is the simplest one. Copy, call to action, link if you want, uh, and that's it. And then here is the offer. Now this kind of looks, this is complicated, I'm not gonna lie. You've got the title, the description. This is the, the piece I said that you don't get a lot of characters in your copy. So you're gonna have to play around to see what you can fit in there. Then you're gonna upload an image and then all this stuff is not going to show in your ad. Um, this is really a topic for another day because offer ads are a little complicated in all these little pieces that you have to include. Uh, but basically this stuff, these three is what you're going to see at the on the actual ad and then all this stuff goes in that email that they receive. Cool. So that is it. Those are the five types of Facebook ads that you can use in your next campaign, as well as how to actually put them together inside the Power Editor. If you have any questions for me or comments or you're just struggling to figure some of this stuff out, please do not hesitate to ask me. I love hearing from you guys. Jump over to the blog, clairepels.com slash blog. Leave a comment there with your question or shoot me an email and make sure that you've got my free guide to list building with Facebook ads, which is really a pretty complete guide to what you need to know to get started with your first campaigns. And it'll keep you from getting turned around inside the power editor. Cool. Awesome. I will see you over on clairepels.com.